Hello my siblings in Christ, I'm Boyan and I apologize if I sound sick. That is because I am. Thank you for your efficient prayers for me. Today we will answer one of the most pressing questions of all. Why on earth does the Orthodox Church have two calendars? I find this issue as fun as watching a fresco dry, so I decided to spice it up a little. Like all good stories, we have to go back in time. But we will have to go so far in time that we will reach the time when the time was not. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God, and God was the Word. And then God said, Let there be light, and nothing happened. Then God said again, Let there be light. Again, nothing happened. Then God said, Dad, first we have to create time. God replied, Oh yes, quite right. Let there be time. And there was time. Should we include this part in the Bible? Asked the third voice, hovering above the waters. Then God said, No, for it is already full of clear-cut information that has no need of interpretation. And God saw that time was good. Now, the problem is, time complicates everything, as we shall soon see. I hope none of you grew attached to this character, because Day is not making an appearance in this video again. Fast forward to 4th century AD, Roman Empire. There are many different calendars in use here. Jewish calendar, Coptic calendar, Roman calendar, and then some more. Roman calendar will be, for now, called Julian calendar, named after its creator, Emperor Calendarius. At that time, people didn't have the internet. Therefore, they had considerable time to spare. This included, but is not limited to, calculating different dates on calendars, working land, praying to God, waging war, and dying of plague. So, it is 4th century AD, and all the Christians assembled in Nicaea to decide once and for all whether Christ is of one essence with the Father, or, for the people with cheap tickets in the back row, whether Jesus is truly God. Harsh arguments were made, slaps were given back and forth, bricks were made to burst in flame and to lose water, rumors of visions of Christ himself wearing torn vestments abound. All in all, it was a very good time, and if you got to attend the Council of Nicaea, you were the pick of the litter. While the bishops were condemning Arius, someone said, Hey, now that we are all assembled here, let us decide the other pressing matters that plague the church. The fathers of the council were not impressed with this wording, due to all the plagues that were like everywhere, but they appreciated the sentiment. They made a list of everything they needed to decide before they returned to their plague-ravaged bishoprics. On the list was the issue of dating Pascha or Easter. For you see, children, at that time, Christians celebrated the Pascha or Easter on different dates. Some celebrated it on different Sundays using complicated formulae, Others celebrated it during the Jewish Passover, which could fall on any day of the week. Some saints saw this as beauty of Christianity, that we can have unity despite different dates. Others were less impressed by this and insisted that all Christians should celebrate Pascha on the same day. The council decided that the Pascha should be celebrated on the first Sunday after the first full moon in spring, which is called Vernial Equinox. That equinox fell, at the time, on March 21st. The reason for the full moon rule was to ensure that the date of Pascha was always separate and after the Jewish feast of the Passover. Ok, so the date was sorta set and everything went fine, right? Of course not. A thousand years and a couple of centuries later, the Pope was observing heavens through his papal telescope, which he obtained after the painful divorce proceedings of 1054. There he noticed something was off in the sun's rotation around the earth. He realized that the equinox was out of place. Why did that happen? Well, you see children, in Julian calendar there were no leap years. So over time, the calendar got out of sync with astronomical year. And this simply wouldn't do as regards to Easter calculations. So the Pope summoned his papal sorcerers and told them, I want a new calendar! The papal sorcerers made a new calendar, which they called the Gregorian calendar, named after the pope who reigned at the time, Pope Calendarius. 
The Orthodox were like, <laughs> silly Catholics, who changes calendars? Catholic countries instantly implemented the new calendar, and over time a lot of Orthodox countries implemented the new Gregorian calendar for the secular affairs. If that milk carton says best before May 7th, you probably don't want to ship it to Russia. Now we come to the 20th century. There are these two Greek priests. Father Theodoros? asks one of them. Yes, Father Georgios, asks the other as he applies sunscreen to his sun-scorched skin. Merry Christmas, Christ is born, says Father Theodoros. Indeed he is born, replies Father Georgios. Then they realize that their calendar is wonky, so they ask the ecumenical patriarch to convene a pan-orthodox council that will eliminate the discrepancy between the Julian calendar and common sense. What's a pan-orthodox council, you may ask? Pan-orthodox council is a code word in the orthodox church for an ecumenical council that you don't intend to obey. So anyway, in order to unbamboozle their calendar, the council fathers needed the help from someone who was more powerful than they are. Someone who was more powerful than God himself. They invoked the help of Milutin Milankovic. He was a scientist, but more importantly, he was a Serb. So Milankovic fixed the calendar and it was even better than the papal calendar. Today it is called either Revised Julian calendar or Milankovic's calendar, clearly named after its maker, Milutin Calendarius. I emphasize this because there's a lot of misinformation out there that a lot of Orthodox churches use the Gregorian calendar, which is false. Anyway, Milankovic granted the Orthodox his new calendar and then he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of Nikola Tesla after giving a hefty donation to the church. So the Orthodox disassembled and… well… First of all, Orthodox wouldn't be Orthodox if they don't cause a schism over every little thing. We go into schisms over how we position our hand when we make the sign of the cross, how our prayer rope looks like and now which calendar we use. So there was a schism over the calendar, and the churches who went in schism over it are called zealots or old calendarists. They followed the ancient saying found in the gospel, man is made for the Sabbath. To make matters even more complicated, in English, new and old calendarists usually refers to people who use new or old Julian calendar, but in traditional orthodox countries, Old calendarist is used to signify uncanonical churches that went into schism over the calendar, even if both the canonical and uncanonical churches of that country use the old calendar. It is all very simple as you can see. Now the second thing is, a lot of the orthodox churches didn't implement what the council intended. Us orthodox are notorious for not following through the decisions very well. So half of the churches implemented Milankovic's calendar and the other half didn't. Why the other half didn't, you may ask? Because the Russians didn't. And you can't expect Slavic churches to do anything without Russia, can you now? Why the Russians didn't implement it boils to one of these two possible scenarios. Either everyone was being murdered and martyred left and right in Russia, and no one really cared to recalculate dates, or the representatives of the Russian church weren't representatives of the Russian church at all, but representatives of the living church, or Zhivnaya Tserkva, that is, a puppet church installed by the Bolsheviks in order to further undermine orthodoxy in Russia. And that is why the orthodox church has two calendars, my younglings, because orthodoxy is anything but an organized religion. Remember that this is a very simplified version and they won't be taking questions at this moment. Thank you. Remember to subscribe, because every time someone subscribes and clicks that bell icon, a seraph gets his wings. It's in the Bible somewhere, check it out. Bye!